I'm Scott L. Miller, this is Sam IT, and on today's show, we're gonna talk about the risks that come with working with junior or incompetent IT professionals. So in reality, it's actually difficult to decipher the difference between what is a junior IT pro and someone who is simply incompetent or unknowledgeable. And in reality, it's sort of a continuum. The difference is really a junior is someone who is on the path to becoming a competent, knowledge, knowledgeable uh, IT professional, and someone who is simply incompetent is someone who's had the time and resources to become competent and failed to do so. But in practice, the two have a lot in common. And in business, we actually have a significant problem here, and that is that businesses predominantly rely upon IT professionals for advice, and that advice almost universally works best or only works when a broad range of experience and knowledge is brought to bear on any given question. Now, some things are much simpler than others. I have a desktop. I want to get this printer working. You don't necessarily need a huge scope of experience to fix that. Others, we need to decide on an architecture and a vendor and an approach to dealing with our infrastructure for the next 10 years. This really requires someone with an extreme amount of domain knowledge across many domains. Uh, and so there is some differences, but what a lot of businesses don't realize, or they do, but they don't know how to get around it, is that they have to spend a lot of their time asking IT professionals to look at problems, for example, that person looking at that printer, and they may encounter situations where someone with experience could quickly fi fix the situation, or more importantly, may be able to look at it and say, whoa, we're, this is the wrong approach entirely. Why are we printing? Why are we using this printing mechanism? Why are we authenticating in this way? This is insecure because of this thing. And there's, there's a lot of domain knowledge needed, even for really simple things, to do them really well. In many cases, we can get by having someone who's extremely isolated or only knows one thing or only has a junior level of knowledge, but every time they're touching something and looking at it, there's a risk that that's something that someone more senior would have looked at and been able to uh, fix better or evaluate to do a much better approach in general. And I'll give a really simple example that came up today, but this is a general problem. We see this every day. Uh, I was working with a client and they have a junior who they work with quite often just to do basic things, putting computers on desks, plugging them in, getting some power, booting them up and so forth. And they rely on senior staff somewhere else to give their general advice. The problem is the junior got involved and started giving because they had the ear of management because they're physically sitting there they jumped in with, I don't know if we need to do a good job and you know proactively build the environment for safety. They don't know if we need to protect against uh, with, with like backups. They weren't suggesting no backups, but that kind of thing. They were suggesting that we not take the time and care to do things right because some of the approaches in doing so, we presume, are things they didn't understand. And so because they're sitting there providing an air of a lack of confidence to the advice of the seniors, and because the management team has no idea about any of the technologies, the junior person may sound almost as plausible as the senior people, and even if it only uh, results in wasted time, well, we listened to this junior, now we're making the seniors explain why the junior is wrong, that's just a waste of resources and very frustrating to a team who's already put in the time getting the answers. It's also a bit offensive when management starts listening to people who have no credibility and starts making credible, experienced people explain themselves to non-credible people. Explaining to managers why the managers need to listen has some merit. Explaining why people with no experience and no scope aren't bringing enough scope to bear on a question is redundant. You already know they don't have the answers. You know they don't know what they're doing. Not that they're wrong with what they know, but they don't have the cross-domain knowledge to put all the pieces together. A common example of that is virtualization. If someone is not fully aware of all of the factors involved in a network or not involved with industry best practices, uh, without that awareness, it's easy to think it may be something you could reasonably question, which of course it is not. But you may say, but we're in an environment that doesn't need backups at that level. We don't need recovery at that level. We don't need the flexibility that that might bring because I can't think of where that might be needed. We don't need consolidation. We don't need that complexity. We don't need abstraction. 
right? And all of those, yes, maybe you don't need them, but all of them for free are really major benefits. And the biggest benefit of all is the, the increase in flexibility, the ability to address the unknown in the future at essentially no cost now with standardization and all kinds of things. If your only experience is at the network layer, you may say, this doesn't provide a network benefit, I don't understand it. If you're a backup engineer and you only deal with your backup software, you may not realize the advantages of multiple different types of backups and recovery because you're focused on yours. Well, we have our backup, why would we need other backups? Uh, if you are purely focused on the operating system, you may say, well, as an operating system administrator, I don't have any need for it to be virtualized. It doesn't give me a benefit within my day-to-day -day duties, we don't need it, and so forth. Each individual myoptic role may not see the big picture, but someone in a CIO role or a generalist who has a general understanding of the hardware and the software involved will quickly say, whoa, 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 of course having more backups and more recovery options, more ability to move between machines, more data protection, more visibility, more uh, speed in rebooting, better ability to protect against uh, patching and those kinds of things, the ability to change our minds in the future without having to burn everything down and rebuild it, the ability to move hardware easily, and on and on. It doesn't take very much of a generalist to make it seem absurd that someone would question virtualization, and yet they will, and without that scope, it may even seem plausible to question it, and that's a risk. And so a challenge that we have across the industries, we have to have juniors for two reasons. One is that companies cannot afford to have every position staffed by seniors. That would be incredibly expensive. And so they don't. But we also have the much more realistic problem, because anyone could come up with money in theory, that we need to take juniors and turn them into seniors. It's a path and somebody needs to walk along it or we'll never have seniors. So this is where we have a really big challenge in the industry. And I have a couple of ideas, but in general, it is a challenge we simply need to recognize and work with rather than one that we need to ignore, which is what people tend to do today. We tend to see people as juniors and think, well, there's things they won't be able to do, but we can trust their advice the same as a senior. That's the worst scenario. Having those seniors, having those people who know what advice to give and the scope to consider is absolutely critical. And generally their advice comes fast and efficiently. You only need a few minutes with a senior for the juniors to say, whoa, we didn't understand that scope, or this is a technology I didn't know about, or I hadn't considered all these things. Now in many cases, you can have juniors who are feeding individual domain knowledge into the senior. Oh, Mr senior administrator with view into all these things, maybe you're not aware we're working with this particular model of equipment, we have this particular version, we have this requirement because of the software, really specific details. Juniors tend to be closer to the, the trenches and the seniors tend to have the cross-domain knowledge necessary to be able to work and put all of those pieces together in order to give advice. Because really, in no particular uh, field, are you able to, within IT, able to isolate your advice to a specific domain. The network administrator can't make recommendations alone in very many circumstances. The systems administrator cannot make recommendations alone in very many circumstances. All of those domains need to talk to each other and come to conclusions as a whole, and that's where your CIO should be able to step in to do that, or generalist working in the CIO's office should be able to do that. You may do it at a smaller scale. Those combinations of skills are absolutely critical for much of the decision making. And one of the more difficult pieces is that each individual role and management are unlikely to be able to see where cross-domain knowledge will be needed or is important if they don't have cross-domain people involved. If you look at it from the perspective of a networking person, you will often not realize that there may be a systems uh, factor involved. Or if you're a systems person, you may not realize that there is a platform or virtualization component involved and so forth. But really, there is very little that we do in IT where all those decisions don't come together. And the same goes beyond IT, where you're working with development or engineering teams who are designing new products and new solutions for your business or for customers, 
they need to be talking to production because if you take development in a vacuum, they're gonna do things like say, what's the easiest thing for us to develop quickly with the least extra training, with the least effort, with the cheapest tools or whatever. And production's going to say, now wait a minute, just because it's easy for you to build doesn't mean that we it's easy for us to maintain and update and patch and run and it needs new hardware, it needs different operating systems. There's all these requirements that developers are generally unaware of that production are very aware of and they need to work together in a lot of cases. It is really common to see people try to develop without talking to production and the, then what production gets, production says, under no circumstances are we signing off on this because no serious consideration for using this software has ever been made. And we see this across all fields, right? This is really common. You need these teams to be talking to each other and you need people at the top who understand the moving pieces so they can put it all together and make great advice. So we need to have a path for juniors to get exposure to seniors, to work in lots of different areas and grow. But there are some answers here. One is education. No, it does not mean the university system. In reality, the majority of universities only have juniors at best teaching their programs. It is extremely rare for someone with even a mid-level range of, of general scope knowledge to move into a professorship. It simply doesn't pay enough and it's not rewarding enough. And professorships tend to be locked into a location, something that IT generally is not. There's a lot of negatives. IT professionals who are actually skilled at those levels, truly skilled, are in very high demand. They may be hard to locate, but they're in very high demand. And so going into professorships is not a popular way to go and universities don't tend to even evaluate or reward people who are actually good at IT. It just doesn't make sense for them. It's not what their students are demanding. So why would the university demand it? We don't need to go into that. But universities represent one of the worst opportunities for learning general skills. A few skills, yes, but in general, you're going to not have a resource because the seniors are not there to mentor and the ideas of looking at things with that cross-domain knowledge, that high-level skill, seeing what a senior does are examples that will be missing. So you have extreme junior students being mentored by people who need mentors, but being in the university system, generally they're lacking those mentors. So they themselves are mentorless juniors now mentoring students, often in very, very bad ways. It is common for professors to be easily misled by vendors who take them down the garden path because they don't have the cross-domain knowledge and experience to know when a vendor is tricking them or simply leveraging them to take advantage of students. So what do we do? How do you approach this? In my own experience, what I've found is that the reality is that the cross-domain knowledge needed to move past the junior levels is widely available and it does not take that much time. A few years of independent study and many IT professionals can actually gain the knowledge if not the actual experience of being maybe not a senior, but a mid-level IT professional. It's very obtainable, especially now that we have access to the internet. The biggest problem is getting experience with a business. This is a problem because uh, the, tech, the tech learning, the very specific technologies and approaches and licensing, all those things can be learned without business experience. But being able to apply that to a business environment can be quite difficult. We also have the problem that a lot of businesses don't reward IT doing a good job. And so if you do this, if you become an experienced, uh, a well-trained person without experience and go into a business, chances are you won't be listened to and almost immediately you will spot that the business is being run by people who are junior to you in the IT sense, but have simply been in the business longer and it is very frustrating and they will see you in many cases, not always, as a threat and Business managers often recognizing that they hired people who are not very competent also see you as a threat to exposing bad management and it can go quite badly. This is a huge challenge for business in general and for IT specifically because the things that we need to be any good at our jobs take us past the hiring practices of the average business. We should be starting our journey in the industry above where many companies are hiring. This is not an easy challenge to get past, but I can only point out the problems we have. I can't solve all of them. But there is absolutely the ability to get the education, get access to the, the tools and learning necessary to move past those junior levels, to be valuable at giving advice, to be introduced to business context and understand that everything is within the context of how do we make money for the business in the, in the 
bigger sense and not be caught in the trenches looking at only a single problem. All of those things can be learned and I have seen it done firsthand of people who took stacks of books, lots of time, built their own environments, did their own hands-on, and worked their way through faster than going through university at a fraction of the cost of going to university, learned a scope and depth of knowledge that I've never met any professor who even scratched the surface of and can go into business and provide value. Maybe not the same as a senior, but are prepared to work with seniors obtain that guidance from them, that mentorship. They can do that through peer review communities. They can do it through uh, third party consulting firms. There's lots of ways to do that. Companies always have access to this knowledge if they choose to. It is more affordable to get the right IT knowledge than to not get it. Right? It is not out of the reach of any company. Companies say that it is only because they're either simply skipping that step and don't want to be bothered with it, or they're not doing their due diligence and don't understand how to interact with IT. But every company has access to this today. There is not a shortage yet of qualified IT professionals looking to help businesses. There is a shortage of businesses willing to look for and listen to skilled IT professionals because they don't often give the answers that they're expecting or want to hear. And the unskilled, the juniors or the incompetent are generally happy to either repeat marketing that they've heard or are actively willing to subvert the customer uh, or their, their, their hiring managers, the company that they work for, for personal gain by looking the other way and intentionally not doing their job because it's easy to simply keep people placated and not tell them what they need to hear, which is exactly what IT should have been hired to do. Okay, to recap, I don't want this to go on too long. We have a challenge. Junior staff presents a risk in business because they will often give dangerous or reckless advice. Junior staff acts like incompetent staff, but hopefully only for a limited amount of time. If we're going to have junior staff, and generally we need to, we need to be uh, providing them with mentorship and training opportunities to move from junior into higher roles. If they are not going to move out of that junior role, we need to make sure they are isolated to roles that do not require broad guidance to be given to the business and that they understand when they see opportunities to pass it on to, to more senior people to leverage those opportunities to help the business. And we need to, as IT professionals, sit down and realize we have the tools to learn the things, to have the scope, to be able to approach in a broad, at least mid-level way past the junior levels simply by sitting down and doing our own education. It's also possible to come to channels like this one and I will help with that, but I can only go so far, especially at this time. I am working on a new Fundamentals of IT kind of course or program through the channel where we're gonna try to tackle a lot of these things, but nothing actually beats sitting down and learning on your own. Of course, a combination of things is best, but you still need to have that picking up a book, going to a website, firing up a computer, and doing it hands-on to get where you need to go. Thanks for joining me. I really appreciate everyone who comes and takes time to watch this channel. If you'd like to help support us, you can help me directly by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Miller. That comes directly to me and helps uh, pay for my time to make this channel and do this research and upload these videos. You can also, if you're looking for that mentorship or you're looking for senior IT professionals who can help guide a business and are not resellers, they're not beholden to any vendors, that is what I do for a living. We are ntg.co. We've been around for a quarter century. We're privately held and profitable. We're not going anywhere. Our reputation is out there. You can look us up. We are all over the place. We would love to help you with your business. And if you'd like to reach out to us, that is as easy as emailing us at info at ntg.co. We would love to look whether it's uh, augmenting your current IT department and helping guide them towards a more senior position, or if it's providing IT that you don't have today, we provide all ranges of IT consulting, and we would love to help your business. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.